a couple of weeks ago, we had installed uh, VirtualBox in our Ubuntu system. So we've got Ubuntu Karmic running on the demo system. And we went and installed uh, VirtualBox. So you can find that episode on our website, category5.tv. Be a good chance for you to learn how to uh, install virtualization on your computer free of charge. What virtualization, as we've talked about in the past, what it allows you to do is take one computer and basically install a whole bunch of operating systems if you want, whatever you've got the space for, whatever you've got the resources for, and run it in what's called a virtual machine or a virtual computer. So a good example of, of where this can be useful is we, we quite, you know, a lot of us know the benefits of free open source software, of uh, using a, an operating system as a host, such as Ubuntu Linux or any distribution of Linux that, uh, that you can get for, as a free download. There are a lot of advantages to that, like not having to worry so much about viruses and things like that and uh, Internet security. One of, the, uh, one of the things that, one of the drawbacks of that is that some people find, okay, well, I can't get QuickBooks to work on Linux or I can't get such and such application to work. Some of the, the newer Photoshop or, you know, stuff like that is unable to run natively, say, on Ubuntu Linux. So do we dual boot for something like that? Probably, you know, we could, but a little bit of a pain to have to reboot your computer, boot into Windows XP or Windows 7 or whatever it is that you have, and then run QuickBooks to do a couple of invoices, print them out, and then reboot back into Linux. It seems a little bit silly. So what virtualization allows us to do is say, OK, I'm in my Linux des uh, desktop. Now I'll bring up Windows in Linux. I can use something called seamless mode. Uh, VMware is another product, and they call it unity mode. And what that does is it basically puts your Windows taskbar into Linux in such a way that you can launch Windows applications in Linux, and it feels like they're part of your Linux desktop. We're not going to get into, into seamless mode tonight, but one of the things that we do want to look at is how easy is it to install an operating system such as Windows 7 into a virtual machine. So I've got VirtualBox installed on my Ubuntu system. And like I say, a few shows ago, we actually did this installation, so you'll be able to check out how that was done and things like that. So. This is going to allow us to install Windows 7 into that system. So all we need to do, so simple. And if you're, I mean, virtualization is so interesting in that it's, it's so commonly misunderstood. I, I've got a question recently where somebody says, you know, if I, and this is an okay question. It's a perfectly legitimate question. I've created a virtual machine. I'm afraid I get to the step where Windows is about to install, and it asks me to format my hard drive. Is that okay to do? What we need to realize is that it's a virtual machine, so the hard drive is a virtual hard drive. In all actuality, it's just a file on your Linux computer. So as you format it, it's just basically creating a virtual hard drive on that computer. So, so that's what we're going to do tonight, is basically just get started on this and uh, create our virtual machine. I've just clicked on New, and this is VirtualBox, the non-open source edition that we're using tonight. It's available free of charge at virtualbox.org. Because I'm going to be installing Windows 7, I'm going to select my version as Windows. You'll notice, though, we can go back to really old versions of Windows. We can go back to other versions, like Windows XP, which is still perfectly legitimate as far as running a lot of app Office applications. But then we can also switch to, you know, let's say a new version of Linux is going to be coming out. We can test it in a virtual machine before we actually commit to using it, which is really, really nice. So then we're going to go next. We're going to allow it to select how much RAM we want. That's going to be a relative number to how much RAM you actually have in your system. I've only got 2 gigs in this system, so you've got to keep in mind that if I allocate 512 megs to my virtual machine, 512 megs of my physical RAM, my actual real RAM, is going to be dedicated to this machine. So I'm, I'm going to have only 1.5 gigs, essentially, uh, on my host system. So that said, I'm OK with that in this scenario. But if you've got, say, 4 gigs of RAM, you don't want to give your virtual machine 3 gigs, because then you're leaving your host with only 1 gig. And that's pretty unreasonable, especially if you're going to be running multiple virtual machines simultaneously. Now we're at the step where we can select our hard drive image or create a new hard drive. So we're going to create a new one. And this, again, is just creating a file on my Linux hard drive that is going to act as a Windows hard drive. We can just hit Next. Here's a question that some people want the answer to. What is the difference 
between a dynamic expanding storage drive and a fixed size storage drive. Basically, what that means, okay, pretty simple, your fixed storage drive is going to allocate all the space now. So if you say I want a 40 gig hard drive, it's going to create a 40 gig file on your hard drive. On, like, you know, there's going to be that file taking up 40 gigs on your actual physical hard drive. If on the other hand, you want to start small and then let that hard drive grow as it goes, uh, you can choose dynamically expanding. So advantages and disadvantages of each. Dynamically expanding is going to be quicker to create right now, so that's why we're going to do it tonight on the show. But it's going to be slower uh, because of the fact that every time you write to that virtual hard drive in your virtual machine, you're going to have to, it's going to have to expand itself. Problem with dynamically expanding storage is, as you know, Windows is a fragmenting file system. So as soon as that thing needs to be defragmented, it's going to go through the hard drive and it's going to reallocate the sectors of that virtual hard drive and potentially uh, fill up your real hard drive if there's not enough space for it. So, um, so that's kind of where dynamically expanding storage goes. Not good for servers, but okay for just miscellaneous home use and things like that. Fixed size storage is going to actually allocate that space now. It's going to be faster because you're accessing a non-fragmented hard drive within your file system. It's allocating all that space now and everything's going to be uh, accessible and it's not going to have to grow uh, as you use the operating system. So again, tonight we're going to choose dynamically expanding because it's a lot quicker to create. Now we want to select how big we want the hard drive to be. I don't have a huge hard drive in this computer uh, in my host, so remember that this is actually going to take up this much space dynamically expanding so it's going to start smaller but it's going to go up to that big all right what do I want to call the file and now I can go next make sure that your guest hard drive size is large enough for the guest operating system I believe Windows 7 can work with 20 gigs we're about to find out so that's all there is to creating a virtual machine that machine is ready to go now all we need to do is insert our CD and we'll be able to uh, proceed with the installation.